Good morning. Happy Monday. Welcome to the live. And my name is Michael Glassford. If you're uh, logging on, just let me know if uh, you can hear me. I'm trying some new microphone equipment today, so I want to make sure that you can actually hear. So as we just we're getting started here. Um, yeah, if you're watching, let me uh, know that you can hear me so we can get past the technical things and then we can jump into it because I'm really excited to talk about trusts this morning. And yeah, that's always such an exciting topic, I'm sure. Let's start Monday morning off with, with uh, some legalese because that's how we roll. Uh, all right, I think everything is working. Uh, Tina, can you hear me? Let me know if you can hear me. If the volume is working, I'm just trying to confirm that. Getting everything set up. Hey, Kaz, how's it going? All right, well, no one's saying that they can't hear me, so I'm going to assume that uh, you can. And again, good morning, happy Monday. Uh, it's January 20th, and this is Legal Live. Uh, where I come on and once a week, uh, usually I do it in my Facebook group. And if you want to join that group, the link is in the uh, comment section. Uh, but I come on and I talk about a, uh, a legal issue or, or, or something that affects us, uh, our lives in a legal way. Because uh, that's what I do. I'm an attorney and I help folks uh, protect themselves with, with estate planning and trusts. So again, welcome to uh, the legal live i'm calling this segment and last week i asked a very simple question kind of it's kind of a dangerous question because it was so simple and i just asked on, on facebook and other social media what is a trust for so i want to start off by thanking everyone for their responses we had some really great answers and some uh, good uh engagement and i wanted to go through some of the answers that uh were shared because they were so good and just as a way of, of saying thank you and, and for participating. So, you know, the, the first couple answers were, were, were more along the funny side. You know, someone said, I usually have to get to know someone before I trust them. And I know they were, were joking a little bit, but really, that's really applicable here. Before you even are willing to jump into any kind of a structure like a trust, you know, you got to understand what's going on. You got to understand what it's for and how it's going to benefit you. A lot of the time, uh, what I do as a lawyer, uh, the return on investment, the ROI is going to come way down the line, if, if really ever. And the idea is I do preventative law. I do things that are going to help protect you from never having a problem. I shared it in a speech last week that I gave, and I said one of the best compliments I've ever received was a client a few years after I had worked with them sat me down and they said, well, I have a bone to pick with you. And I, I asked, well, what, what's that? And they said, I, uh, we spent some money with you and then we set up our, our, um, our things and, and, uh, you know, we, we never, we've never had a problem since. And, you know, I was just grinning ear to ear. Hey, kiddo, how's it going? Uh, I was grinning because I was like, yes, success. We, we did it. We, uh, we set you up correctly and you've never had a problem. Um, that's what I do. And so sometimes if you're a business or you're, you're trying to protect your family, you know, it is an investment in those two things, your business and your family. And sometimes it's hard to see the ROI because the ROI comes in the fact that you never have a problem. And that's success to me. But I understand that it's, you know, it's a, conceptually it's hard to, envision so when when we uh going back to that first comment usually i have to get to know someone before i trust them absolutely get to know the system get to know what they're for and what a trust is for and what i'm about understand my why and why i do these things and maybe that'll help you feel more comfortable about um building a trust for your family or your business uh okay the next comment uh uh was uh, we we go back and forth this uh commenter and i we have fun uh, he said, I thought that's what you were supposed to tell me. And yeah, I, uh, I took advantage of that. I'm like, oh, we'll, we'll have a conversation. But really, I, the reason that I asked the question, what's a trust for, is I wanted to kind of pull the audience and kind of get a, a, 
read on what everyone's thinking trusts are about. So not only can we talk about those items, but we can also breathe a little more uh, uh, truth into it and, and show a little more light on what trusts are actually doing for us. Hey, good morning, Sam and Amy. Uh, so uh, great comment. And the uh, the next one, getting a little, a little more meat. You know, someone said, well, they're protecting, they're for protecting your assets so your family gets them. Uh, versus going to taxes, fees, etc. So yes, absolutely. Uh, I listened to um, Rich Dad Poor Dad recently, and and his comment, uh, Robert Kiyosaki's comment on on corporations, were that they were the secret of the rich. And he has a whole segment on how you know back in the East India Trading Company and all the shipping companies, how they uh, these rich individuals created corporations to protect their individual investments but also to protect their larger estates and trust work is is right along those lines there it's designed to uh, protect your family from from things in the future make sure that that your assets are going to them and not to the things that necessarily shouldn't be going to hey sam uh so great comment uh, the next one, allowing my kids to be able to inherit before 18 and keeping things for them like the house while leaving instructions on what should be done with the stuff. I love this comment, and it's it's so true. Uh, we do our children a, a huge disservice, and we don't even realize it. If we, uh, if we leave anything to our children in, in a will or an estate plan uh, and it's not buttoned up in, in, in a trust situation, we're creating problems and because a minor can't well a minor can own own property in their name but it comes with technical problems it comes with oversight it comes with government intervention and court oversight so we are really creating a lawsuit you know it's not necessarily a contentious lawsuit but a lawsuit nonetheless where there's procedure and time and cost and money and, and all of those things uh, when we leave assets to children who haven't reached the age of 18 yet but a trust isn't leaving the asset to the 18 year old it's leaving the asset to the trust to then manage it for the 18 year old so we skip that step and we uh we can definitely leave and it's it's interesting how we we quote stuff you know we we mark it earmark it that way uh, but it's the stuff really that becomes the most valuable to us and if you think about it you know we can we can be um, we can accuse ourselves of being material and 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 that this that and the other and and some people are and some people aren't but that's it's not really my judgment call. What I see when I go to court and when I when I work with families and, and individuals is that the stuff that means the most besides the high value ticket items, but the stuff that means the most is the stuff that that a memory has been attached to or a feeling or an association has been attached to and now it's it's not just a rocking chair it's grandma's rocking chair it's not just a pen it's the pen that the dad used when he when he signed all of his books so that become that moves from a value uh in monetary uh, means to a priceless disposition and so even the stuff needs to be dealt with and protected because Often I see the most cruel, the most uh, vicious fighting in court, not over the, the high dollar items, but the stuff that has the intrinsic uh, sentimental value. So I love that comment. And that commenter went on to say, you know, these trusts are especially good for uh, people with children with special needs. You know, we'll make, we'll make a, a separate video just on special needs, but yeah, man, there's, there's no better way to take care of a child uh, that has special needs than, than with a special needs trust. And you know, the child grows up, but not necessarily is able to take care of themselves. And so that trust is going to be there for them every step of the way. So yeah, we'll definitely come back another time and, and, and just hit on special needs um, and what we can do with that for families and, and children. So great comment there. Um, Another commenter said, I don't know. I stopped trusting people a long time ago. Well, I, I'm sorry that, that that's happened to you. That's happened to many of us. And really, that's one of the reasons why we put trust in place, because now our wishes and our 
uh, rules are in place and they have to be followed because the trustee has a fiduciary responsibility and if they're not following the trust as outlined, uh, they could find themselves in, in great trouble. And so we don't necessarily have to trust people anymore because we can trust that the, uh, the system that we've left behind is going to work. So good morning, Stephen Hobbs. How are you? And so that's a great question, actually. You know, he was being kind of funny, but uh, trust do allow us to get get beyond the the frivolity of of man sometimes. So good one. Uh, another one of my friends said, "Well, that's a broad topic. Can you be more specific?" And yes, that's that's kind of what the the point of, of this exercise was. I wanted to leave it broad to see what people were thinking, and then we can narrow it down uh, in today's. Uh, legal live and in future posts that that I make and and if you follow me uh, I every Tuesday I, I produce what, what I call the lawyer minute and so those come out every Tuesday and just a little minute segment of something you can be thinking about something you can be applying to your business or your family and then every day I try to post you know helpful information that is uplifting and kind and um, will allow you to make some decisions that are gonna bless your life and your business so that's kind of what I'm about in, in social media. And then every Monday, we're going to be doing these legal lives. Sometimes they'll just be on my main page here, uh, but most of the time they'll be in my Facebook group. Uh, and the group is called Dare to Dream Big. And so you can join the group. The link is in the comments above. And uh, yeah, so it, well, this is meant to be a broad question, so we could uh, have a discussion. Uh, one commenter just said, control. And really, yeah, it is about control. It's about taking control away from the government. It's about taking control away from the wrong people. Uh, and when I say taking control away from the government, it's that's only because it's not necessarily a, a nefarious thing, but when we pass away or when we're no longer around to transfer an item that's in our name, then it takes an extra step to transfer that item. That's what probate's about. We have to take that extra step, that process to transfer an item that is uh, no longer transferable because it's got our name on it and we've passed away. So that comes at a cost, that comes at a process, that comes at uh, not only a financial cost, but an emotional cost for those that are mourning the, your passing. And then it also comes at a time cost. You know, what, what's the opportunity cost of, of your family member having to go to court, having to deal with the attorney? rather than mourning your loss and remembering your mem uh, legacy, things like that. So control is definitely a part of, of trust planning and, and trusts. Uh, another comment, my granddaughter has a trust fund, unusual circumstances, um, but I would say it's controlling the use and protection of allocated funds. Absolutely, so when we create these trusts, we can, we can designate how they're used, the funds, how they're used and, and how they're uh, when and if they are distributed out of the trust into the uh, the beneficiary's name, uh, some trusts. Well, I'll, I'll I'll save that comment for for it's coming. It's coming to be continued. Uh, one said uh, to keep funds from being taxed. So trusts are definitely a tool in which we can um, be smart about paying taxes. Trusts aren't always free from tax. You know, you'll hear that trusts are actually in higher tax brackets. Um, so everyone pays their taxes, but again, you know, we hear a lot that the rich don't pay as much. Well, I don't know if it's a question of the rich not paying as much more than the rich taking advantage of the full tax code and taking, um, using, using the, the law that's there to, to their advantage. And when you have a, uh, entity like a trust or a, uh, a corporation, then you're able to do that. And if you don't, then you just... You're just not in that arena because you don't have those options because you haven't created that kind of entity. So thanks for that comment. Um, here's the one that I was waiting for. Someone uh, said there are two basic types of trust, revocable and irrevocable. So yes, those are two different designations of a trust. Revocable meaning changeable that we can change. We can go into the trust and change um, the things that we've set up. We can change the beneficiaries. We can change... Uh, the trustees, and we have some some control. And and for the most part, for many people, a revocable trust is is sufficient. Uh, and 
you know, we're not necessarily going to talk about irrevocable too often, which is unchangeable, but you know, it comes with the territory. If, if I take power away from myself in an irrevocable trust, then it's even harder for a third party to get at that asset. So irrevocable trusts become much more about asset protection and, and some very specific uh, planning instead of the revocable trust, which is, is jumping into control and, and, and taking away control from the government and, and probate issues. So, but there are way more than just two types of trusts. You know, in both of those designations, we can, we can talk about a disclaimer trust or something called a Clayton election or something that's called an asset protection trust for, for another person. We can't even make an asset protection trust for ourselves. And we'll do videos and, and, and uh, specific topics on all this. Today's is very general because the question I asked was general, what are trusts for? So we're just talking about some general uh, trust ideas to get the conversation started. And if you ever have any questions, you can reach out to me, email me at info at legallifeplan.com, ask your questions there. Uh, my website is, is legallifeplan.com, so we can talk about uh, whatever questions that you have. There's, you can, you can um, schedule a free appointment uh, on the phone or, or on a Zoom, and we can just talk about what your questions are, because there are a lot of questions out there, and, and a lot of them go unanswered. Or you can come in and, and join the Facebook group, Dare to Dream Big, and we talk about dreams and, and, and legal questions in that group as well. It's a private group, so it's a safe space. Um, as safe as a Facebook group can be, uh, we always have that caveat. So, uh, someone said, short answer, providing directive or tax benefits to inheritance of as assets to ensure in desired handling and protection of an asset in the event of one's passing. So that was a very technical answer. Thank you very much for commenting on that. Um, and yes, you know, we are looking to make sure that uh, all of those things are taken care of with trust planning. And the last one that I wanted to share was to protect your loved ones from the government. And really, it is, you know, the, the, the tragedy, the unavoidable thing is the passing away, the death. You know, we can't stop that, we can't undo that. But what we can completely control is what happens after the death. You know, is there going to be a family fight? Is there going to be a, a big court process? Is there going to be issues? Um, you know, we can control the the uh, scenario that 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 or the arena that that's going to fall into we can't control if someone wants to fight over something but we can definitely set up the parameters of, of you know of how things are going to go once we're gone so i wanted to do, thank everyone for their comments thank you for watching today and just want to wrap up with with a final thought you know today is we're celebrating the, the life and, and legacy of martin luther king and what an amazing man he was and is you know, he, his dream literally changed the world, you know, and he dreamed big and he dared to dream big. And I always, I love to ask the question, what's your dream? You know, do you allow yourself to dream? I, I, as I asked the question um, recently, it's, it's become pretty clear that, that we, we've conditioned ourselves, we've trained ourselves not to, not to dream and not to give our, ourselves permission to dream that we just, no, we're just going to keep our heads down and, and stay low and stay out of sight and, and, and do our thing and, and provide for our family, but keep our dreams small. And if our dreams happen to happen, then, then that's exciting. But Martin Luther King dreamed big, and he, his world changed the dream. So the question I ask is, is your dream big enough? You know, I was, I was recently um, in a meeting with one of my mentors, and, and he shared this thought, and it kind of it has shaped how I – do my goal setting now and how I do my dreaming. He says, I make my dreams big enough that they require divine intervention. I love that. Um, and it's, that's part of my why, you know, I want, I want my dreams to be big enough that it requires divine intervention, that I have to have that relationship with a higher power to make these dreams come true. And big dreams are big game changers. It's, you know, it's, it's the story as old as time when there was a big dream and, and, and work and effort put forth and big things happen. Uh, no big things came from, from small thinking, from small dreaming. So we want to dream big. And why am I talking about Martin Luther King besides the fact that that's today? Um, why am I talking about dreaming big? Well, trusts are a great tool for, 
for things in the future, like many people commented on. But trusts are also, they create the scenario where you can feel safe today, where you can feel protected because you've done those things today. It helps you feel safe, helps you dream bigger, and it helps you live more. And really, that's my why. And that's why I do trust work, and that's why I, I share these stories. Because if we can live better today, you know, I, I, my catchphrase is it's your life, it's your story, make it a good one. Really, that's an invitation. Dream big. It's your life. It's your story. Make it a good one because this is the only one you've got. And a trust creates that force field around your family, around you, so you can go out and explore your space and, and be confident and live the best life that you were meant to live. Touch as many uh, lives as you can. Dream big. And see what happens with that. So with those thoughts, want to uh, sign off today. Again, if you're interested in, in following, you can join our Facebook group. The link is in the comments. Uh, Dare to dream big. And we'll see you in the group. These, uh, these legal lives will be, for the most part, broadcast in the group. Uh, today, it's, it's on my, my larger Facebook platform. Uh, so if you like that, you can subscribe to the group. You can follow, um, you can follow me. Uh, I do have a YouTube channel that I'll put in the comments as well and all the lawyer minutes that I do every week. Um, coming up on my uh, 52nd lawyer minute because I started it in February of last year. So I'm excited about that. We'll have a really big lawyer minute. It'll be 59 seconds. So anyways, thank you for joining me today. We'll see you next week.